this is going to be my review for Resident Evil, the final chapter. Uh, this is the newest and supposedly last installment of the Resident Evil franchise. Um, I didn't really plan on, like, you know, completing this series, but one of my favorite podcasts, uh, Now Playing, was doing this whole series as a... Um, um, retrospective and so um, when I started doing the review I had seen a good handful of them and I just decided to, to watch along so watch the movies and then listen to the reviews as they were doing them and then um, started doing that and I just decided well I guess I'll, I'll finish out the series with them and go see this in theaters so I actually saw some theaters yesterday and um, only the second one that I've seen in the theaters uh, the other one that I saw in the theater was the last one, actually, was um, Retribution, which came out in 2012. So there's been like a five-year difference uh, since the last one came out. So I'll try not to make this too long, but um, I mean, plot-wise, this one's pretty basic. But just to start out with, it's written and directed, again, by Paul W.S. Anderson. So he started the whole series. He wrote and directed the original Resident Evil in 2002, and then he's, he's written every single one um, since the first one, but after the first one, he didn't direct the two after that, so Apocalypse and Extinction have different directors, uh, but then he came back to the series, and he did Afterlife, um, the last one in 2012, Retribution, and then this one, the final chapter in 2017. So... Yeah, this is, you know, this is basically his series. He's written all of them and kind of ushered it through. It's pretty crazy that it's, like, 15 years old. Um, I think it's made a decent amount of money over the years. There's a lot of them now. This is the sixth one, so it's uh, pretty well known. And uh, once again, uh, Mila Jovovich is back as Alice. She's the main protagonist in all of them. Um, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and go through every single uh, one of them up to this point. Uh, it's just a lot to go through, but if you don't know, there's like, follows this evil corporation, uh, Umbrella Corporation, and they've been responsible for this outbreak that's caused zombies, and she's been having to deal with them the whole time, Alice. If you watch them, there's little quirks here and there, but that's basically what she's doing. She fights zombies, and she's trying to get back at the Umbrella Corporation. So, same situation here. Um, in the last film, she was told that she had to go to Washington, D.C., to help be like part of the last stand of the surviving humans and the so that's where this one starts kind of and apparently it was just a ploy or nothing was really happening in dc but then she's told by the computer system you know the evil computer system that's part of the umbrella corporation the red queen uh gets in contact with her somehow and tells alice that there's actually an antivirus this whole situation and if she can get back to the hive which is in raccoon city where the very first one took place um it's the point of origin where everything started this hive underground raccoon city if she can get back there she can get access to an antivirus and release it and it will kill every zombie everything that's been infected with this t-virus is what's going around and turning people into zombies so that's her goal but um course there's going to be problems and uh, a couple of main villains are back so the villain that's been in the last couple has been a guy named Wesker same actors back um, as him Sean Roberts but he's kind of playing second fiddle now to apparently Dr. Isaacs has been the head of the Umbrella Corporation and he was in the third I think he was in the third film Extinction uh, but he's back now He's played by um, actually a recognizable character, or actor, I should say, uh, Ian Glenn. He's been more recognizable now because he's been in the uh, Game of Thrones series. He plays Khaleesi's uh, right-hand man, uh, Mormon, G.R. Mormon, I think is his name. Anyways, so he's back. He's the big bad. He's in charge of Umbrella. He's the one that's actually caused the whole virus outbreak in general, and then... So Alice has to fight him, and when she's going back, she meets one of her former friends, uh, Claire Redfield, played by Allie Larder, and she was in 
the extinction and afterlife um, uh, movies, installments. So she's back, and she finds a couple survivors, and they're going to team up and try to take down this evil Umbrella Corporation once for all. That's, that's the plot. But anyways, um, this... I was actually... I don't know. I wasn't completely going to be pessimistic the whole time going into it. I thought, you know what the hell, I'll give it a try. I thought the trailers actually made it look kind of interesting. I wanted to see it in 3D because the last two had been shot in 3D. Um, and supposedly they were actually looked pretty decent um, if you watch in 3D. But I didn't get to see it this this time because just because the times didn't work out. I'm actually glad I didn't because um, this movie is really dark. It's very darkly lit. And I can't imagine how bad that would look with 3D because everything in 3D is going to look a little bit darker usually. And if it's a darkly lit movie, that's going to be really dark. So I'd imagine this looks pretty bad in 3D. I also heard that it was actually just post-converted to 3D and was not not worth it at all to see it in that format. But um, yeah, this movie's pretty all over the place with the plot. It's pretty incongruous with everything else. It kind of goes back and retcons a bunch of stuff and I mean this this series has never been known to be like extremely diligent about the way that it lays out the plots um, that's for sure it's not a very good series I don't know why I went back and rewatched all of them but this kind of goes back and tells you the whole story of well quote unquote the whole story of how this whole virus outbreak started um, they kind of just go back and redo a bunch of stuff and there's not a ton to the plot just basically Alice trying to get from point A to point B and, you know, fighting fighting zombies, fighting Dr. Isaacs along the way, and there's clones and a bunch of stuff. I don't know. I don't really want to get into this plot. Um, but, I mean, this is known for its fights and action, and so it's like an action zombie film, and that's kind of all I was looking for it to be. And it started out okay. It's definitely like a Mad Max ripoff, this post-apocalyptic stuff. But um, action was pretty decent for a while. Um, at the beginning, I was like, okay, this is, this is decent. I'm, I'm liking this action. And then, then it got into some really, really horrible stuff. The cutting and the editing were so fast. And, oh my god, it, it was so hard to follow. You just couldn't see anything. And you know, uh, Mila, Mila Jovovich is getting pretty old. Well, she's not old, but she's getting older, so I don't think she's doing nearly as many stunts um, on her own and stuff. But So I don't know if that's why they just made such quick edits. But it's just like almost painful to try to follow some of the action because it's so quick and you just can't see anything. So that got really annoying real quick. I hated that. Um, it kind of slows down a bit later towards the end. There were some some funny parts towards the end there's a um a couple scenes when dr isaac's character has like these upgrades and he can do this kind of predictive um, he has like a predictive software where he can uh see what alice is going to do and like counteract all of her moves and i mean you've seen that kind of thing before and like the uh, robert Downey jr uh sherlock holmes movies or something like that but it was still kind of interesting here um but overall, like, anything that it did good with the, the uh, action scenes um, were pretty much just negated by how shitty the editing is and how, like, darkly lit it is. You just can't follow it. Um, the plot's not great. It raises more questions than it answers, and the final payoff is pretty bad, too. Um, don't want to spoil it, but they definitely didn't put... A cap on this one you know and end it like oh this is it we'll be done oh no they gotta leave it kind of open it was just well i mean i didn't spend a ton of money to go see it It was like nine bucks but probably not a great great way to spend nine dollars um so yeah other than like uh there's definite ripoffs of like mad max the it's probably the closest to the third installment so 
Um, Resident Evil Extinction was very, very much a uh, Mad Max ripoff. They were driving around like a big tanker in the desert. And this one kind of had the same vibes, except it was like darker, um, not bright, not as brightly lit. Had those vibes. There's a, a scene when they're back in Raccoon City and she meets survivors and they're going to attack the Umbrella people. It's uh, made me think of Saving Private Ryan at the end when they're guarding that city, that bridge. A little bit of that thrown in there. Like I mentioned, there's like some Sherlock Holmes stuff with what Dr. Isaacs does. Um, and other than that, I think that's about it. Um, for the whole series, the first one was pretty good. I mean, that came out in 2002, and the zombie craze was still, wasn't like peaked at that point. It was very early to see the kind of early zombie stuff. And it was just very, um, an isolated film. It was just set in this one uh, lab area, and you know, it didn't get too crazy with the theories of what was happening. So it's kind of a good story. That one is my favorite. That one's definitely the best, I think. It, it is the best in the series. I don't think there's really any arguing that. I thought this one was probably the second best. The rest of them are all pretty bad. <laughs> um, so I'm giving this one a 2.5 out of 5. It's like. Not a great movie, I don't really recommend it, but you could definitely do worse. It looks okay when it's not cutting um, extremely quick and all these bad edits. It looks pretty good, looks pretty decent. Um, story's okay, and some of the action is pretty good. So, I'd say it's the second best of the series. But, um, you could watch like the first one and then this one. That's probably what I'd do. Just watch the very first one and the very last one, you wouldn't be missing much. The whole, the series is just pretty convoluted and not that um, cohesive. So, uh, what else could I say? I wouldn't recommend the series. Yeah, just, like I said, just watch the first one maybe. And if you like that, maybe check this one out. But, alright, um, like I said, I have a 2.5 out of 5. Alright, that'll be it.